Hey, what's good people? It's Kay. Been a while, I know. After finishing up Ruby Volume 8, I was always going to take a break, but then I got caught up with moving. Lots of headaches and lots of heavy lifting. I haven't been to the gym since starting HRT, so it's fair to say that my upper body strength isn't quite what it used to be, and trying to carry heavy cabinets and boxes isn't fantastic when your chest is super sensitive. Anyway, there was that, and then came installing my new setup, new PC and all of that. It's been fun taking it for a spin, although running recording tests has been a bit awkward, with my office essentially being open to the rest of the house, so sound and lighting is something I'm going to have to improvise as I go along. It's been some time since the first episode of my trend transition diaries, so I thought rather than coming back with a reaction video, it would be nice to kick things off again with a new diary entry instead. I had to think a lot about what I wanted this second episode to be, and I've gone back and forth on it over the past few weeks. This recording is probably the third or fourth different version of this episode, so I used the first episode as a way to set the scene for my transition, you know, give you my first round of observations from HRT, and just some background on my transition overall. So in this episode I'm gonna give a short update on all of that stuff, but then I want to get a bit deeper into next steps. Hormones are great and all, but for my transition personally, they are a part of the first step, like the last part of the first step. And I can't just let myself stay satisfied with that. I know how that sounds, like it sounds like I'm quite snobbish and flippant about these things. I fully understand the significance of each stage of transition, especially the early ones. I mean, the early stages are probably the most important. I'm just someone who always needs to be thinking about the next thing. I'm someone who doesn't want to feel stuck at any point because I've been in that stuck place before and it sucked. But first, an update. I already mentioned that my chest is super sensitive these days, which is also another way of saying it doesn't take that much to hurt. And when it hurts, it's like if you stub your toe, but multiplied by a lot. It's the kind of pain that has you questioning why you even bothered to move in the first place. But it is what it is, I'm still excited for my development, and look, I know it's a long time in the future yet, but I'm looking forward to getting augmentation surgery. That's definitely something I'm keen on. Is it awkward to talk about my sex drive? I think it's only awkward if you make it awkward, and I like to be pretty open in these videos. I can feel that it's improved recently. Like, it's definitely not dead, so that's a positive. And I've been told that it improves exponentially as you progress. Again, it's not the most important thing in the world to me, but you know, I'd rather have a sex drive than not have it, personally speaking. I've also been grappling with the, I guess it's the emotional clarity, like because I'm feeling different things more clearly, that's taking some adjustment. What makes it difficult sometimes is that I like to reflect a lot, especially since, especially since getting my transition back on track. I think a lot about different parts of my life and the lessons I can keep learning from them, but now that I feel my emotions more clearly, I have to be careful about not getting caught up in the reflection. Like, if I'm thinking back on a bad part of my history, there's a chance that the emotions I was feeling back then can come back to infect me now. But it's been interesting feeling things differently. You know, when I feel lonely it makes me want to lie down, or in a recent example, drink myself into a stupor. When I feel happy, I want to listen to music and dance around. When I feel angry, I guess I don't actually feel angry that much anymore. But when I feel specific things, it has a greater effect on my whole being, is the point. And it also makes me more outwardly expressive too, which on its own is a big change for me, because I've always been someone that likes to mask my emotions, or at least guard them. Another thing is that lately I've been more comfortable with presenting, and I can think of at least a couple reasons as to why. For one thing, I'm starting to care less about drawing attention, or at least I'm feeling better about shutting out that kind of attention. I think a big part of it is because of how I choose to present. I can't remember how much I got into my choices last time, but a thing with me is that I don't gravitate towards presenting as super feminine 
feminine. My wardrobe is like 90% blacks, as you as you can probably tell just going through my videos. Um, and I also go big on layers. I don't go too hard with my makeup choices, and my mannerisms are pretty low key. And I was also blessed with pretty androgynous features anyway. It's like a poetry slam, alternative bookstore, hipster coffee shop, enigmatic lesbian vibe. And I'm fairly comfortable with just continuing to build on top of it and grow it as I go along. But again, I understand that because this aesthetic is the one I go for specifically, it allows me to cruise around and blend in more effectively, which is generally what I'm after though. I recently had to go shopping in public for some things, you know, some clothes, some accessories. There wasn't any great need to, but it was something I wanted to push myself to do because I don't do that kind of shopping in public very often, certainly not on my own. I've mostly done online shopping when it comes to buying clothes and accessories or whatever, which of course can be hit or miss when it comes to sizing in particular, but biting the bullet is worth it for the convenience, I think. I mean, you can always send the shit back if it doesn't fit, you know? But again, I've been feeling the need to push myself, so one night I went out and bought some clothes. I bought a new bag, some other things, and I just shut the rest of the world out. It might be the first time I've done that kind of shopping in public for a long time. And I mean, like, years. I was nervous a lot throughout, but I can't even describe to you how giddy and excited I was by the time I got back home. It was like a adrenaline high. Let's move on to these next steps. When it comes to these, I don't want to sit still if I don't have to, right? Call it making up for lost time. And at this stage, my next step is dealing with the boring shit, bureaucracy, paperwork. And the truth is that I don't really know how much of it I can do at this point because it's still technically early, but I'd like to find out for myself. I mean, yeah, the fact of it is that I want to change my name. Up until recently, I only wanted to change my middle name because it's obviously masculine. My given name is more ambiguous, so I was okay with that for a while. But the longer I thought about it, the more I want to just create a bit of separation. So I'm going to change my middle name for sure, and I'm going to alter my given name. Just give it a tweak to better reflect how I feel about myself. Once I'm settled on that choice, then it's time for the paperwork. Change of name documents, passports, birth certificate, all that. Again, we'll see how far I can get, you know, with being tangled up in these processes, but I think it's at least important to have these things clearly established on my plan. What else? I already mentioned my intentions to get breast augmentation surgery down the line, and that is down the line. From what I remember, I need to wait at least two years after starting HRT before I can be even considered for something like that. It might take longer than that too, depending on certain circumstances, but that's another thing that's established on the plan. Another thing I want to explore in the more near future is voice therapy. My voice has bothered me for a long time, and I always knew I would have to deal with it eventually. Now I'm actually starting to look into my options. It's going to be hard and expensive, like any therapy, but hey, I gotta do what I gotta do. I know that there's a longer conversation coming out of this when it comes to passing, and I know that the things I've been saying in this episode might make me sound a little desperate. I understand, and I get the whole debate between passing and not passing. Maybe I can get into it further down the line. For this episode, I'll just say that it's totally just a personal choice. My transition is my own. If you're trans or just anywhere on the non-binary spectrum, then how you go about it is your own decision too. And personally, taking these steps is an important thing to me. I think I just need to make sure I go about it in a healthy way, keep things in perspective, try not to get too consumed by it all, and lean on my support network. As much as I want this for myself, it wouldn't be helpful if I lost everything else in the process. We'll wrap up there. That's how I'm feeling. I know I wanted to keep a bit of a gap between these diary episodes because I can never really vouch for how much stuff is going to happen to me in, in between, but I didn't anticipate the gap between these episodes being so long, but shit just happened, so it is what it is, again. I mean, what was it, three months? I'll definitely try to come back around for another episode before August, I'll, I'll promise you that. In the meantime, I've got a bit more work to do. 
I have my new setup now, so I have no more excuses. Uh, Ruby Retro, my Ruby rewatch project, that's coming. I have other series coming I'm not going to reveal just yet. I'm having a lot of fun gaming on my PC as opposed to consoles, but there's more work and decisions I need to deal with before I can fully jump into gameplay recordings. And yes, I'm fully aware that aside from the Ruby thing, this little spiel is much the same as it was during the last diary episode, or at the end of the last diary episode. We'll get there eventually. I think really the only pressure point is making sure I get the Ruby stuff done before Volume 9 starts, which is, I guess, early November, late October. Uh, wish me luck. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.